Good evening and welcome to tonight's show from DJN TV, Disc Jockey News TV. Tonight's show is brought to you by Electra Voice, DJ Event Planner, DJ Trivia, Odyssey Innovative Designs and Cases, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and the DJ and TV Insiders. Hello, thank you for joining me today for this interview. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Me too. I have been checking a lot of your work out. It's been, it's been cool to see because you have so many different things going on in your music yeah. career. So why don't you tell us about your early beginnings? How did you get into DJing? I know you're a singer as well. Um, yeah. How did it bring you to where you are today? I've always wanted to be a singer, a performer, and an entertainer. So my earliest memories are of me like singing on the playground to myself and having an amazing time. And then in grade two, I realized that the bus driver had like a cassette tape like player so I could bring a cassette tape and he could play it on the bus so I would make mixtapes for the whole bus with like Backstreet Boys and like all this stuff yeah and it was cool because like all the eighth graders were like oh my god I love her she's playing like Backstreet Boys anyways so I would go on the bus give the tape to the driver he'd play it on the way to school and then on the way back from school like when I got off he gave me the tape back so yeah, that's when I started, I guess. And then I did like the traditional thing. I went to school, I went to university. All along I was singing and dancing. And then um, I started dancing at bar mitzvahs. If you haven't been to a bar mitzvah, the setup of the evening is really different. So instead of just like eating, then dancing, they have like dancing in between eating. And that was really fun and the, dynamics of like the DJ was really different and I really liked it. So yeah, that was my opportunity to start DJing. I told the owner, I was like, oh, I want to start DJing. So I learned a little bit from him. I got a couple mentors. One of them is DJ Dopey. He's a DMC champion. And another one is Four Corners. He's the Toronto Raptors DJ. So yeah, I got, I had really good teachers and I just started playing like charities and playing bar mitzvahs and then on and on. And I ended up quitting my full-time job to pursue my singing and music career and DJing at the same time. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that. You're just like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to yeah. go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was researching you, well, actually before I was researching you for this, because you're on Lux Life Sound, I'm like, I got to check out this mm -hmm. girl. Uh, and I saw your music videos. So yeah. you're a singer, songwriter, hell, you're a dancer as well. Like I've seen the choreography. I'm like, damn girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so you're obviously not just a DJ. Mm -hmm. um, so how is that experience shaped uh, your DJ career? And do you feel like you're more of one than the other, like a singer or the DJ or? What are yeah. Thinking? At first I would think when I was doing everything, I was like, oh, I'm more of a singer. Oh no, I'm more of a dancer. No, I'm more of a DJ, but they're all a part of me. So I'm not more one than the other. I just am what I am and who I am. Um, and yeah, it's good because when I'm DJing, I can play my songs. For example, I just had the Raptors game, which I DJed. And during the halftime, I did a set and I sang my song in the halftime. So it like goes together and I always dance while I'm DJing and it adds to the energy. It adds, it's really cool. I get paid to do what I love and it's, yeah, it's amazing. Like, yeah, <laughs> it just goes all around together. So. Oh, I love yeah. that though. I love that you say like, it's not more one than the other. It's just, it is a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And I love that you know that because I think that's something artists struggle with. They're like, who am I? What music do I play? What music do I make? You seem yeah. really comfortable and confident in who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. 
And you're also working for this amazing company, Lux Life Sound. Yeah. yeah. So they're like the number one female DJ agency in Canada and hopefully like they expand to even more places. Oh, I would love that. Um, yeah. So with them, I, yeah, I DJed the Raptors game. I've done tons of corporate stuff with them. It's been really good because they're very female driven, obviously, and in a male dominated space um it's good to have that and someone that's like in your corner if like anything were to happen they're there for you so yeah it's really nice and it gives everyone more of a fair chance they like they really help like people of color the lgbtq community so it's it's nice yeah cleo is such an awesome freaking boss too yeah she she's such a boss woman like and I really admire people like that because I'm always trying to learn and like the creative stuff. Well, I can always learn and expand and I'm doing that. But the business is like something different. And she's such a boss woman who doesn't take no for an answer. And that's amazing. I really admire that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, and she, she has so many things going on too. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, yeah. Like, these ladies just slaying it. Yeah, it's really cool. And like, I love the thing I love about the agency is that everyone is so different. Like, I've never felt it to be like a competition or anything. It's like everyone brings something totally new. Like, we don't generally look alike. We all play, well, we can play whatever music we need to, but we all have like different specialties or. Yeah, we're just all different, which is like really nice and really cool for us and for the clients as well who need to book us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh you mentioned a little bit earlier how they linked up that very special gig. Can you tell us about that gig, the prep behind it and then mm -hmm. the experience once you did it? Yeah. Okay. So at first I was just going to DJ the halftime. So already I was like so excited about that, preparing for that. And then the DJ who normally DJs the whole game was going out of town for a conference, a DJ conference. And they asked me if I wanted to do the whole game. And at first I was like, holy shit. Like, oh my God, this is so big. Like, what do I do? Like, can I do it? And then I, I thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, like it's not rocket science. They're not asking me to play basketball on the court with like the players or something, like something I don't know how to do. Like I know how to DJ, like I've done this. It's yeah. Um, so in order to prep, then I, I reached out to some DJ mentors. One of them was DJ Dopey. Another one was Lee from U DJ school. I got a couple of like lessons and we just like talked about how the, night will go. And at first I thought that, okay. Cause when you watch the game, you see like, or you hear in the background, like let's go Raptors or like, duh, 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 duh. you hear different sounds. So I was like really studying like every single game and like, when do they play what? Or, and then after I, I spoke to four corners, who's the official Toronto Raptors DJ, he's like, Oh yeah. Like during the actual game, it's a sound guy who does that. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Let's work for me. I studied it all and like I had prepared stuff, but awesome. So I had to play during commercial breaks and the halftime and the, op okay. When people walked in, I had to play music for that. When the players warmed up and between the commercial breaks, I had to play. And yeah, so I made a bunch of folders of like different instrumentals for people to talk over. I had, I had like, I don't know how many instrumentals I had, several. And then I had a folder of like my best instrumentals, I had a folder of sports songs, um, specific basketball songs like Space Jam, <laughs> which I ended up playing. People ask me all the time if I played that. Um, and what else? Oh, yeah, like hip hop music because basketball yeah hip-hop and basketball are very like linked and I had my my halftime set so I rented the equipment the equipment was quite expensive because it's yeah 
it, it was expensive. This gig was definitely like an investment. Yes. Like just, yeah. Cause like paying for DJ lessons, paying for videographer, p- paying for the rental of the equipment. It's all an investment, but it was, it's so worth it. So yeah, I, I prepared, I would practice constantly. I would watch games. Uh, I went to a Raptors game ahead of time, which was really nice. Four Corners invited me to come to a game. And that was, that was amazing because I could see the structure of the day. He showed me that they give him like a rough agenda of how everything works and what songs you need to play for everything. Um, so I had that in mind. And then when I would watch basketball games afterwards I had that agenda in front of me and I would be like okay commercial break so he he played this song for this thing yeah and the actual gig was amazing um yeah (laughs) okay let me like center myself so I I allowed myself to like to stress to to prepare to ask a million questions beforehand like I let myself do that. But the day of, like, and even a little bit the day before, I stopped answering people's messages. I didn't want anyone in my head. I stopped going on social media, especially the day of. Like, I didn't open Instagram until I had to do stories just to tell people, like, how my journey was. And if they would DM me, I would ignore it until the end. Text messages, same thing. Because I really wanted to be focused. So I like kept my energy up. I played music. I practiced. I got ready, did my hair and makeup, and I was super pumped. I went to the venue, and they gave me a bag of Adidas clothes to wear, which was amazing. Yeah. I saw I, that. Yeah. So originally, I thought that I had to like get my own outfit, so I bought a whole new outfit, but they bought, they got me Adidas. So I was like, oh, amazing. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah. And I just played and did my job. And the whole time I had, a, I had headphones on and there's a lady on the court who's constantly like telling me things to do. She's like, okay, we're going to go to cat now in one minute. Um, make sure you have an instrumental ready. And then when, when it was a timeout or a commercial break, they're like, okay, three, two, one, and I have to like play it. So it's good. Like all my practice and my years, I feel like paid off and really helped with this because when I DJ, I can literally have full conversations with people and DJ at the same time, which is really good because in this case, I had like someone speaking to me the whole time and I had to be aware of like what I was going to play, of what was going on everywhere because there's a lot of moving parts. So yeah, I, it was good. And I, 20,000 people, like it's, it was really cool. So yeah. (laughs) I was following that journey and I love that you detached yourself from the online world and just got in the zone and focus and pumped and even, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that journey leading up to, like you said, like, yeah, I panicked and I was like, okay, now what are we going to do? And like the lessons and the, like so much amazing prep so that when the day came, it was like, all right, I got this. I've been over prepared for it. Like, I hope that those of y'all that are listening to this interview right now are taking notes because (laughs) I swear it is all in the freaking prep. We get like, so like, oh my God, my DJ gig. It's like, it's all about the prep leading up to it. Mm -hmm. Especially for a big gig like this. Like when I do, when I go to bars or DJ club, well, a club is a little bit different depending on the vibe, but sometimes I just show up and I like DJ on the fly, depending on like who's there, what their ages are and everything. But for a gig like this, it's really, it's all the prep. And you say yes, and then you prepare your ass off. (laughs) Yes, yes, exactly. Just say yes. Just say yes before you think about it. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, it is scary because it's outside of my comfort zone. Like now I feel like, okay, I could do this again. But when I haven't done it, I'm like, oh, this, this gig is like significantly bigger than other things I've done. But yeah, you can do it. The only way to grow is getting out of your comfort zone. So. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that. I, <laughs> yes. 
when you get uncomfortable, it's like, it's like lifting a weight, right? You're like, if I want to get those gains, I got to get uncomfortable. Yeah. Or you just have to like jump, like, yes, take the leap. Yes. Yeah. You know, in, in watching your journey in like, even just if those of y'all don't know with Lex Life Sound, um, during our gigs, we have to like do some Instagram stories so people can see what's going on. And like all the content I've watched of you, you're so positive and thoughtful okay. and like you just seem like the kind of person that lives in the moments of those experiences. Mm-hmm. Have you always been like that? Was that a learned uh, habit? And you, like, why do you think that's important? Um, I think I have always been like that. I did have a moment in my life where that was like super tested. So in 2013, I was in a car accident. I was hit by a drunk driver and that like changed so much. Like I was on vacation in Miami. Always make sure you have travel insurance because that was a $60,000 bill and I didn't have to pay it. Thank God. Um, But yeah, I had... I was in the hospital for a while and then I took a plane back to Canada and I was literally lying in a dark room, not doing anything for weeks. And I had to really recover. And there's like, even thinking about it, there, there's so much that went into that recovery, like physically, mentally, like spiritually, everything. It just like really challenged me and it took years to get better because just when I thought I was getting better, I'd have a step back. So I've always tried to be positive, but that really tested me. So I felt like I needed even more tools then. So I would watch like positive psychology lectures on YouTube from Harvard. I would listen to audiobooks, things just to like boost me up. I would write things I'm grateful for because I, I needed to like do the homework and the like build the foundation again that I was kind of losing in that process. So yeah, I feel like I'm pretty much back. <laughs> and and I try also in the moment well before a gig, first of all, I'm always grateful that I get to do what I love. And when I show up, I'm happy, I'm excited, I get to do it. I try to share especially with the Lux life Um, gigs because they're always in different places. I try to share a little bit of what's going on on Instagram. And yeah, I like connecting with people. And I think a big way to do that is also not being on your phone. So when you're like sitting with someone, putting your phone where you can't see it, making sure like it's on do not disturb or even airplane mode or having a few days or a few hours out of your day, just disconnecting. I think that's really important and living in like here and now. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm like sitting here like, don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> <I can't hear." laughs> yeah. Well, that was tough, but yeah. 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 I remember reading about that and it's just like the things we don't know about what we are all going through at any given time or what we have been yeah. through. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible, um, and inspiring. So I'm glad that you're doing well today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, humans, we're so resilient. We really are. We just have to put our mind to it and be grateful because in an instant, like everything can change and yeah, you can lose everything or you can lose a person or you can lose your life or you can, so Knowing, knowing that you're going to die is like amazing, which sounds weird, but it's like you have one life and this is your time. Like do what you want with it. Don't live for someone else. Don't, I don't know, choose a profession because your parents wanted you to do what makes you happy because this is your life and no one can live it for you. And you are with yourself 24 hours a day. Like there's no one who's going to do things for you. And yeah, you just need, you need to live with yourself and be happy with yourself and love yourself. And yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. 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 Preach. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, to end this interview off, wow. I would love to hear about the next exciting chapter in your life. Do you have some specific gigs, projects, events you'd like everybody to know about? Oh, I feel like I'm always building and I have so many things in my mind. Um, I'm going to be going to Europe mid-May to mid-June. So I'm going to be doing a few gigs around there. I'm still confirming and organizing a couple of things there. I have one date um, confirmed in a radio station in Paris, which is super exciting. Uh, I want to do a South American tour maybe next year or the next year and a half. I have tons of music coming. Yeah, I'm constantly building, planning, and yeah. So just stay tuned on social media at Your Girl Flav, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, my website, Your Girl Flav. Yeah, dot com. <laughs> we'll have all those links for y'all to check out, including mm. music, uh, music videos, all that fun stuff. Even we'll link you mm. up with Lex Life Sound because I know some of y'all have probably work like a corporate day job and you're like, okay, we got to get these girls out. So, <laughs> yeah. Or if you want to hire them, like, mm-hmm. For anywhere in Canada or anywhere in the world, just contact Cleo at luxlifesound.com. Yes. 